support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? We have some breaking news, I guess you would call it. Umbrella Man! Biker Dad is reporting that a warrant has been issued. And this from a tipster from email. But there hasn't been no arrest. So how can we believe what the media is talking about when it comes to Umbrella Man? Well... There's also another story we're going to cover that gives a awesome rebuttal on this. I'm talking, it is plain awesome how he rebuts the media's game here. And that is what's going on is the media is playing a game. They are trying to divert all the attention from what happened in Minneapolis to this one guy. They're saying this one guy started everything out there. That's why the city was burning. So this article actually comes back and puts it in your face. I have said I cannot believe it at all. I don't. I think they are looking for a patsy because they couldn't do their damn jobs. Billions, I am thinking here. Billions. Minneapolis, uh lost because of those it was on fire and of course we got everything going on in portland right now that it's like day 65 because i'm schmucks they don't have jobs it's you, know, you always find it funny when people complain that they don't make money they can't afford this can't afford that well get up and work it's really that simple well they only pay minimum wage well Lean on yourself and make it happen. Go out there. Start a business. There's businesses out there you just start without any damn money. You just got to make it happen. But, no, they'll still cry and whine. Because they believe they are owed everything that they get. They believe them food stamps are their rights. Yes, that's what they believe. They believe having a bunch of kids that the state and you and I are responsible for paying for it. Oh, Hollywood, why are you getting on the poor like that? Uh, you know what? When you see them out there doing all the protesting and blah, 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 you kind of have to say to yourself, when is enough enough? Now they're starting to go after motorcycle clubs. Do you really believe that a 1% club, the Hells Angels, is going to have something to do with that. They don't get political. They don't get involved in that. None of them do. But it's a boogeyman for the media, and it's a cover-up for the cops. All this based on a tip that was emailed in. I'd really like to know your guys' thought on the boogeyman, or umbrella man as they're calling it. First it was, it was a law enforcement officer, then they went to great lengths to prove it wasn't. Then all of a sudden they get one email, one email, saying, well, this was a Hell's Angel and he's associated with the Aryan Cowboys. And we all know that the Aryan Cowboys were accused by a woman of threatening her. Funny how they were just walking by. I guess the word Aryan and I guess the patch scared her. So, what happens? The media picks it up. Why? Because they're looking for whites to blame. They do not want this to turn out that it was Antifa or BLM? No. They want to blame it on the white boy. And who better to do it than some organization that has a lot of name recognition? 
That's what they're playing towards. And if you cannot see that, you are blind as a damn bat. This is getting ridiculous, and I hope everybody wakes up. Now, I want to address uh, real quick uh, the incident out of Ohio. I've been getting a lot of feedback on that. And again, I'm there to put both sides of the story out. You know, you got your media, which I think is blowing it out of proportion. I don't think uh, what they're saying is true. Then you had a witness send in an email, and then people blew up about that email. I get it. People are supporters. You're going to support whatever club you want to support. Personally, I want to wait till the video gets released because you know it's going to get released. Then you can see for yourself what's going on instead of hearing my opinions or hearing what Cleveland.com has said because that letter was also submitted to them, which they, of course, haven't got back to me about because I emailed them asking, hey, why don't you give me a, a shout out? Let's discuss what you're putting out there and what proof do you have that this is what it is? Not just because the cops said it is, but what proof do you actually have that these were Mongols there. I'm getting word uh, from some people that are saying, well, they were wearing fake Mongol patches. Well, if that's the case, and they bought it from China, they're not Mongols. So again, what's it have to do with that club? That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to put blame on one club or another. You, you got to look at all angles of it. Now, again, if it's true, they're not part of the club if they bought that patch. So they shouldn't be put in the news headlines, and that should be, you know, mentioned in the story. Which, of course, it didn't. You know, Cleveland.com, they went on and gave a whole history of the violence and this and Nevada, and it's like... Really? You're really pumping it up that much without all the facts coming out. And I believe that's what's wrong with this media. So you have two incidences out in Ohio, then the other one with Umbrella Man that you're blaming clubs for. Why? Because you can't do your due diligence? You can't make sure the facts that you're reporting are true? What the hell does the Hells Angels want to have to do with freaking riots? They're a non-political type of organization and they'd be the first ones to tell you. Again, I believe it's because of that incident that happened in that city with that lady. So they're grasping for straws to cover up what really's going on out there. Poor leadership. It's just like Chicago, poor leadership. They've been so far left that they don't even understand that they took an oath to the Constitution of the United States. They do not care. So what do they do? They're trying to blame it on white supremacy. They're trying to blame it on the white boys. Hey, you know, these, uh, you know, these white boys, they're the ones who started it. Let's just say if it's true, you're telling me one guy started this whole thing in Minneapolis. That's what you're trying to tell me. He told all these people to go out there and burn all these buildings down, right? That makes absolutely no sense at all. You get tired of hearing about this white privilege crap. Give me a damn break on it already. And what's even worse is you got people out there that are white sitting there kneeling, putting chains. Are you kidding me, man? You are a bunch of damn schlucks. I can call you worse, but, you know, I try to keep it clean nowadays. You are buying into, and if you're embarrassed of who you are, I do not know what to tell you. Do a freaking Michael Jackson or something. Change the color of your skin. I don't know. But what you're doing out there is not teaching your kids any damn thing. You're not teaching your kids how to make it in this world. This world does not owe you nothing. You got to go. You got to barrel through that wall and make it on your own. Stop buying into the masses. It does not 
does not take a damn village to raise a kid. It takes parents who know what the hell they're doing. And if you're embarrassed of who you are, God knows what you're going to pass on to your damn kids. This country is screwed up. But one thing I get pissed about is when you go after clubs for no reason. There's already enough that goes on with the media and clubs. There don't need to be, you know, gasoline poured on a damn fire between two notorious clubs that don't get along. You're actually going to get more people hurt because of that crap. I would like an answer for the Ohio thing. If they were wearing, like everybody's emailing me, I've been getting a lot of these, fake Mongol patches or fake shirts, cover the story and at least say that. Don't say the damn club was involved because they're fakes. They have no membership in that club. Actually, get off your ass and do some reporting and some investigation. Same thing goes for this Umbrella Man. So, that's my monologue for today. I'm going to get into some biker news right now. Again, we're going to cover the Umbrella Man story from Biker Dad. And then we're going to go to the rebuttal, which I think was just beautiful, man. Beautiful. So, let's get this party started. Here we go, Biker Dad. Full warrant document implicating Hell's Angels member in Umbrella Man riot case in Minneapolis. Let's take a listen. Search warrant says this was a key moment when the riots took a more violent turn. A man in black with an umbrella broke out windows of a Lake Street auto zone. A tipster told police that the Umbrella Man is a member of the Hell's Angels and wanted to sow discord and racial unrest. The search warrant says the man is a known associate of the Aryan Cowboys, a prison gang out of Minnesota and Kentucky. Minneapolis police have also linked the man to a June incident in Stillwater, where a Muslim woman was harassed by a motorcycle club wearing Aryan Cowboy leather vests. WCCO is not naming Umbrella Man because he has not been arrested or charged. Speculation as to who he might be has been rampant. Last month, St. Paul police were forced to issue a denial along with timestamp photographs showing Umbrella Man was not one of their officers. This is WCCO photojournalist Demine Chun recording his reaction to being tear gassed. It feels really, really hard to breathe. Behind him, you can see Umbrella Man. Moments later, Chun was capturing images of looters when suddenly you can see the edge of the umbrella and Umbrella Man threatens him. Chun did walk away. I remember that I did listen to him. He did scare me. Chun, who covered the most intense moments of the riots for WCCO, said the incident with Umbrella Man is one he won't forget. I think he's the only one that said something bad to me. 99.99% or 100%. No one... No one said anything to me except him. Okay, so the reporter has now become the story. Uh, now, let me get to the warrant issued here. Uh, I'll read it off. You're a, uh, you're a, let's see here. This is a full copy of the warrant with implicated man's name and phone number redacted as he has not been charged. Very interesting, right? Hasn't been charged yet. So they know who he is. Why haven't you released anything? Uh, upon doing uh, research, uh, let's see who is, okay, we'll just call him the detectives, was able to confirm that name redacted as a full-fledged member of the Hells Angel and is a known associate of the Aryan Cowboys. The Aryan Cowboys are a known prison gang out of Minnesota and Kentucky. Okay, for one, you got everything backwards in this warrant. And the news is actually reporting this and you heard it. A Hell's Angels member is not an associate. It's the other way around. So it'd be the Aryan Cowboys were an associate if you're talking about it the correct way of the Hell's Angels because the Hell's Angels are the dominant. Uh, your uh, detective further found, or this is the DA, whatever, uh, that on June 27, 2020 was present during an incident. And they're talking about... Uh, the one they're looking at. Let's just say your umbrella man 
further found out that on June 27, 2020, was present during an incident in Stillwater, Minnesota, where a Muslim woman was racially harassed by a group of motorcycle clubs wearing Aryan cowboy leather vest. Yeah. So now they're trying to bring in on all this racial stuff because one of the clubs has the name Aryan in it. And looking at a driver's license photo of and several booking photos and comparing them to the photos of the umbrella man there's a striking resemblance in the eye nose bridge and brow area looking at the damn video you can't tell any of that also of note is a slight variation in left eyebrow that is present in photos of umbrella man is also approximately 6'2", which also fits the height of Umbrella Man, on video and in screenshots as he walks along breaking out windows and is approached by several people. Umbrella Man is taller than them around. They don't have nothing here. They got nothing. Absolutely nothing. you seen in that video, if you're on the radio, come look at it, that you couldn't tell who this guy was. You couldn't tell. So how are, you, how are they even going to prove it? My God, man. Let's, you know what? Let's go to the rebuttal on this. And this is from Revolver News. Uh, they go on to say, Dishonest Press pushes phony Umbrella Man story to hide truth of the riots. I totally agree. Yesterday, the press breathlessly triumphed that a suspect has been found in the case of the Umbrella Man who was recorded on video smashing the windows of an auto zone on May 27, the second day of the George Floyd riots. Let's take a look. In. There he is. Now, can you tell he's got a gas mask on? According to the affidavit, which is still unproven, without an, even an arrest to support it, they haven't arrested him, Umbrella Man is a member of the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood. Now they're saying it's the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood. <laughs> the potential arrest of a man who may have broken some windows was deemed worthy of coverage. Listen to the news outlets. The Washington Post, CNN, and the New York Times. Even international outlets like the BBC and National Post were very interested in Minneapolis's broken windows investigation. It's not because any of them suddenly care about law and order. Neither the New York Times nor the Washington Post ever dedicated a single news article to the retired police officer David Dorn murdered in St. Louis while defending a friend's store from looters. There is only one reason for their boundless enthusiasm. It's an effort to set a narrative, which I have been saying over and over again in this one. This is in the New York Times, and it's typical. Erica Christensen, an arson investigator with the Minneapolis Police, wrote in the affidavit that the vandalism created an atmosphere of hostility and tension two days after Mr. Floyd's death. It unleashed a chain reaction of arson and looting in the Twin Cities, she wrote, after protests had been relatively peaceful. That is bull. It has never been freaking peaceful on protesting. Never. They're looking for a scapegoat's what they're doing. Just about every article includes something like the line above. All of them have the same purpose, promoting the idea that Umbrella Man is directly responsible for the George Floyd riots. By extension, the right and its supporters are to blame for all the murder and destruction of the last month. They like projecting is what them people like doing. They do something, but they're going to project it on somebody else. The left and its voters, which actually committed the arson and looting, are blameless. 
He goes on. This story is fake, not because Umbrella Man has been falsely identified, but because it doesn't matter. The riots in Minneapolis were not started by one man with an umbrella. They were started by left-wing agitators who attacked a police precinct, smashing windows and damaging cop cars. At about 6 p.m., the protest turned into a march towards the 3rd Precinct, where it is believed that the officers worked. A much smaller group than the initial protest started vandalizing the building, shattering a window, and spraying painting squad cars. But hey, it's supposed to be this one man that started everything, according to that one lady. The local news report from May 26th, the very first day of agitation over George Floyd, and an entire day, an entire day, before Umbrella Man smashed a single window. A whole day before this incident happened. The George Floyd riots were never peaceful. They involved destruction, rioting, and yes, smashed windows from the very beginning. All over Minneapolis and in cities across the country, the story was the same. Peaceful protesters gave cover to violent opportunists, while Politicians abandoned their citizens and attacked their own police departments to placate them. Blame an umbrella man for the riots is worse than a cop-out. It's an act of political defamation blaming the ideological opponents of rioting for destru destruction the left spent weeks giddily defending. Like I was talking about in those hearings. They came out and said it was peaceful. Peaceful. Come on. The press made its feelings clear weeks ago. On June 2nd, the New York Times race hustler Nicole uh, Hannah-Jones lectured CBS News viewers that destroying public property was not a form of violence. <laughs> See if I had to get this to play here. You know, Nicole, um, as we've been watching the coverage of the protests across the country, um, we are seeing peaceful protesters, and then we're also seeing destruction, arson, looting. There is a bit of a, a raging debate, I think, in this country about how you express dissent and what is the appropriate or inappropriate way to express dissent. Um, the former President Barack Obama has said, you know, that, that essentially there's no excuse for any forms of, violent, of, of violence, rather, um, in a statement condemning these acts of, of violence. Um, I want you, because one of the things you offer is a full perspective and context, More, most importantly, context. When we look at people rioting and looting, and no doubt some of the victims of the looting are going to be businesses that are African-American businesses, um, how are we to interpret what we see there? Um, you know, the president called people thugs. What is it that we're looking at? Or, or, and maybe it's not just one thing. I think, one, we, we need to be really careful with our language. Um, yes, it is disturbing to see property being destroyed. It is disturbing to see uh, people taking property from stores. But these are things. And violence is when an agent of the state kneels on a man's neck until all of the life is leached out of Just his body. Just things. Destroying property which can be replaced is not violence and to put those things uh, to use the exact same language to describe those two things I think really um, it's not it's not moral to do that so yes I, I think any reasonable excuse me any reasonable person would say we shouldn't be destroying other people's property but these are not reasonable times these are people who have protested against police violence again and again and again year after year after year and still we can have videos of law enforcement with witnesses nonchalantly taking the life of, of a man uh, for the alleged crime of passing a fake twenty dollar bill so when we have people who say and not to mention the rest of his criminal record uh, but one interesting Thing, you see how these people think, right? Well, property, you know, can be replaced. You know what? Try doing that. Say they try to bust up your Harley or your bike. See how you're going to feel about it. Uh, one thing that came out of that hearing was some statistics they didn't want to hear. There is more whites killed from Leo 
than there are blacks. But they're not going to tell you that, are they? That very same day, in the news, uh, the paper's news division reported on, quote, the violence that marred the peaceful protests of the previous weekend. Now, two months later, the press lies are obvious. Rather than admit the truth, they're trying to cover it up with another lie. You got that right. Got that right. Go after freaking, uh, it's funny, but it, which one is it, press? Is it the Hells Angels or is it the Aryan Cowboys? Which one is it? Will you please get something right? Unbelievable. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Hells Angels member cops plea in Sudbury Court. This out of the SudburyStar.com, Harold uh, Carmichael. Uh, it was called Project Skylark. Organized Crime Enforcement Bureau has pictures of all kinds of stuff up there. Nice uh, guns. Anyway, a full-patched Hells Angels Nomad Chapter member from the Ottawa, and this is news from uh, you know over the northern border, uh, has pleaded guilty to a charge arising from a massive three-community drug trafficking investigation that culminated with numerous arrests a year ago. Uh, his name is Joshua. He's 33. He was he's facing five charges. Uh, he was arising from the uh, his arrest August 1st and was in custody at the Sudbury Jail. He pleaded guilty Wednesday to cocaine possession for the purpose of trafficking. Uh, a sentencing date's going to be set. Uh, he he's in custody due to a surety surrender after he had been granted bail. His re he was released from uh, custody pending his sentencing. His bail and conditions include that he is to live at a residence in Chesterville, have no contact with co-accused in the case or anyone he knows to have a criminal record not possess weapons or illegal drugs, not to associate with anyone involved in a motorcycle gang, and not to display any Hells Angels emblems, colors, or paraphernalia. When he actually got bail, he had to make a $4,000 deposit. That deposit remains in effect. While no pre-sentence report has been ordered, the court heard uh, his prior record. Uh, Ottawa lawyer Neil uh, Weinstein uh, he's represented them. He and the Crown Prosecutor, Claude Richter, both attended court via uh, teleconference. They heard about the, all that stuff that went down. So uh, they had wiretaps the whole nine yards. So he does uh, cop a plea in uh, the Sudbury court. Now let's go to Corey Graff's wall of shame, man. Here we go with another one of these. DFW, a 13-year Dallas police veteran, Daniel Collins, you sick puppy, arrested, charged with child uh, sexual ex... Oh my God, I'm, I can't even finish it. I'm just going to put on the freaking video. My God, do you get sick of these people. Uh, anyway, the video's not playing, it seems. Nope. Uh, a 35-year-old senior corporal with the Dallas Police Department's auto theft unit has been charged with uploading sexually explicit images of children using the City of Dallas employee internet. Real smart there, dummy. After being arrested by officials with Homeland Security, Daniel Lee Collins was charged with one count of transportation of child pornography. It was a Dallas IT specialist who traced the IP address used for the uploads to the city of Dallas internet network. According to the court documents, Collins allegedly used the network to upload sexually explicit photos of pre... Oh my God. You know what, you... Ugh. Girls uh, to various Google accounts. You know what, that makes me freaking sick. You damn freaking cops with your ugh, sexual... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go to another one before I get sick to my stomach. Uh, Oberlin officer arrested for... In oh, here's another one. Indecent behavior with juveniles and malfeasance. James Berry, 26. My God, what's wrong with you people, man? A police officer in Allen Parish faces charges of indecent behavior with juveniles 
and malfeasance in office. On Monday, July 27th, detectives with the Allen Parish Sheriff's Office received a complaint stating that Oberlin police officer James Berry, 26, was having inappropriate sexual conversations with a 16-year-old girl on social media. That's why you got to watch your kids on social media. Investigators said they recovered several audio messages, some of which contained sexually explicit content between the suspect and the juvenile. Sheriff Hebert says the investigation also revealed Barry used social media to interact with the juvenile while on duty. You know, these people are stupid, man, and they're running around being cops. Well, I guess you can't say that cops have to be smart because they usually ain't. The investigators say they recovered, okay. Uh, Barry was booked in the Allen Parish Jail, accused of indecent indec behavior with a juvenile and malfeasance in office. The investigation remains ongoing. Uh, Chief Grady Haynes confirmed Barry was an officer in training at the Oberlin Police Department, working part-time from March to July. Haynes says upon learning of Barry's arrest, he was fired from the Oberlin Police Department. Quote, we do not tolerate this behavior from any individual representing this department. And there you go. You got two uh, child uh, horn dogs in the wall of shame. Let's go to my final thoughts. It's Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, here we go, man, with my final thoughts. And do, do I have some final thoughts on this one. Don't you get sick of hearing how the cops go after bikers like they're doing in uh, Minneapolis when you have two stories from Corey Graff's Wall of Shame where they're going after kids sexually. They're damn freaks, man. Why aren't they out there busting on them or something? You know what? I'll approve. Yes, I give you my approval. Go bust on them. Go medieval on them. That is some sick stuff. What is with people, man? It's, you know, maybe it's the internet, you hear about it more, because when I was a kid, you really didn't hear about it, but, of course, there was no internet. But now it's, like, everywhere. And just to think the gall that they have to go after a biker or two organizations in Minneapolis, when that second story really, really gave a good retort to what they're trying to say. It is actually sickening what is going on now. And it's got to the point where, you know, I used to watch all the news and stuff. I watch different news channels to see where everybody's coming from. I won't even turn on the news anymore. Yeah, I'll read for these stories and stuff. But at some point, it's like, man, it, it's just not worth it because nobody's reporting facts it's all opinion and it's not supposed to be opinion based when you're trying to be a reporter that is what's disturbing about it all and now they want to use a cop out oh it was the hell's angels that started everything now that we find out that was a day after everything started but people don't understand that because it's not being reported they're not going to report, hey, the Umbrella Man, that story was after everything started blowing up out there. No, they're not going to tell you that because it don't fit their narrative. That's why it's up to each individual to educate themselves on what's going on. But they won't. They're just sheep. They look at the TV and say, oh, this is what the reporter said. It, mu it must be true. That is what's wrong with this country. People not educating themselves and following other people's opinions. I say it all the time on my show. This is opinions from me. Don't listen to me. Go out there and find your own opinions. Go educate yourself. Go research. Just because I say something doesn't mean it's gospel. Hell no. I'm wrong a lot. I have my beliefs, but that don't mean that should be your beliefs. 
And I believe that to be true when you're watching every damn media station. Whatever one you're watching, you're watching. They got a slant. If you're watching CNN, well, <laughs> every one of them basically now except Fox News is left. You know, Fox is right. Oh, uh, A-double-N is right. Breebart's right. But there's way more on the left than there is anywhere else. You know, let's just look at what they're doing with polls right now with what, you know, they're saying, oh, this and that. You know what? Bull crap with your polls. You're going to tell me a thousand people represent what's going on. Get out of here. You're just trying to, you know, tamping down the turnout. One thing I've always said, and I believe this full heartedly, if I can grab my ass into a time uh, machine, I'd go right back to right before the Constitution was written and say, you know what? Yeah, you fought to get away from a monarchy, but guess what, you Whigs? You created one. And I'm talking about these congressmen serving 30, 40 years, getting rich off of us. They don't care about you. They care about the special interests. Do you know that a congressman, and I'm not talking about a senator here, but a congressman has to raise upwards of $25,000 a week to pay their dues to the party? Yeah. They got to go out there and raise that money. It's called dues. Look it up. If you don't believe me, look it up. That's the problem we have here. You got these powerhouses or elites trying to tell us little people down here what to do and they are being puppet masters with these on the left portland again 65 nights in a row or something like that come on and then you got one coming out uh, that we covered well property ain't riding that's how freaking stupid they are and they really think that you're going to believe that crap. And what's bad is some people do. Some people do. It's sickening, actually. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a lot of people, on a different note, a lot of people have been asking me why I've been covering the Minneapolis and Ohio so much is because I believe that the two correlate. And what I mean is the media is completely wrong on them and it needs to be talked about because it's damn time that we start fighting back against this stuff that's what mrf's for that's what ncom's for that's what abate's for and yeah i'm a broken record get out there and join them if you can't at least pay your dues but these are the type of organizations ncoc that's going to fight back against these false narratives what do you think is going on right now in Minneapolis with the Hells Angels? They're going to be freaking profiled by Cal because the news is saying this. So, of course, the cops are going to follow that and start pulling over everybody to find Umbrella Man. And I can bet you that it wasn't even one of them. Oh, this was the same or this was close. You couldn't identify that guy. He was behind a damn gas mask. Just because somebody matches the uh, height and stuff, don't make them a member. Because why? Of an email tip? A tip. That's how all this is going. So yeah, there's a warrant out. Let's see if there's an arrest made. But I really like the rebuttal from that dude on this. He went point from point on why it's moving from one lie to another. I cannot wait to 2020 gets over with, man. I really can't. You know, this with the COVID and then with uh, all this breaking loose, I think it was engineered to be this way. So hopefully people are going to start waking up and realizing what's going on. And if you're in a different country, I bet you're freaking laughing at us right now. People from the north and Canada's probably laughing at us. Oz is laughing at us because us Americans are pretty damn stupid right now for letting this happen. So, don't forget to uh, take us with you with Spotify and iTunes, all the majors, man, Player FM, the whole nine yards. Uh, take us with the work. 
go over and like our social media pages. That helps us out. As well as, hey, sharing our videos, man. Sharing our uh, podcast everywhere on your social media. So people ask how they to help the show. Well, that's how you can help the show. With that, uh, don't forget to leave comments. I want to hear from you guys on this one, man. Let's get a debate started because this is just out of line what they're doing. If you ask me. I say goodbye. See you guys. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat jacked. Don't Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!